Hey, how's it going, everybody? So, I know my last video was really long, and to try and make up for that, I'm going to try and make this one really, really short. But I wanted to touch base on the fourth point I made in my last video, which had to do with the gravitational slash redshift effect, because I don't think I explained it very well the last time around. And uh, after I do that, I have something pretty remarkable to show you. I feel it's it's pretty darn remarkable. But essentially, I ran this idea past a fairly open-minded colleague of mine, and he was like, mm, well, there's a slight problem with that. I kind of knew where he was going with it before he even started, but basically he went on to say that well, when you have a light or a light source interacting with a large mass concentration or a, a, a like a star or a, a black hole of some kind, the, the waves do redshift when it comes into contact, but there's a double-edged sword involved here because when, say this is a light beam, this is, this is a light source or a light beam. When the light beam comes into the area of interaction with the gravitational mass, in this case a star, it falls in to the gravitational effect and it gains energy when it when it does this. And basically the effect you observe, the, the physical effect observed in this instance is a, a what's called a blue shift, uh, relatively the opposite of a red shift. And that's why I have this color blue. So when light interacts with the mass as it's approaching it, it blue shifts, right? And typically after it reaches the point at which it's now traveling away from that concentrated mass, it begins to redshift, right? And he was like, so there's really never any net effect from that interaction. There's really no redshift you ever see from this. And I, I almost stopped him before he finished, but I was like, well, hold on, man, hold on, because we're not observing a typical interaction of gravity. We're observing a slope. We're observing, a, uh, if you were to call this a bowl, this, this uh, general shape a bowl, then you would call this a down, uh, a slanted plate or a, uh, a, a, a downhill slope. Essentially, the, uh, the light, when it approaches uh, this side, say it's coming from this direction over here, and it's approaching the, uh, the, the mass, or in, case, in this case, the object we're talking about in, uh, in, this, in this frame here. It, the light approaches from behind it towards us, the observer, and as it does that, it doesn't get pulled in to the uh, to the, the 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 gravitational effect. And instead, it does the opposite. Since gravity is being since space time is being expanded uh, at the at the rear, then essentially what we're seeing is a redshift in both directions where typically we would see a blue shift on this side and a red shift on this side, thus the, the net zero effect that he was talking about. But I explained that to him and uh, showed him, you know, or I mentioned this, this, this paper um, by uh, Miguel Cubrier, Macubrier. And um, he was like, hmm, well, I'm, might be that might be something interesting you've got there. And I was like, yeah, you you think so? <laughs> so that I just wanted to address that because I know I, I just felt that that was a a counter argument that was going to be barreling my way at some point or another, and I wanted to to nip that before it even got started because 
this this effect is not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an expansion at the rear and a contraction at the front. So that essentially from the point of an observer uh, at, at, in this direction, um, you know, in this in this photo, we would be the observer in uh, directly in front of it. There, there is no blue shift. There is only red shift. And essentially what you would expect to observe if this illustration holds true, this theory holds true, you would expect to see theoretically approximately double the red shift that you would uh, if you just had the, the front the front of this effect um, being observed uh, sands the, the blue shift on the backside. And I thought about this. How can I test this? How can I use this 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 little itty bitty video frame? You know, not a whole lot to work with, but again, I think I've got something. So what I did is I took two different frames from the footage. Uh, those frames are 65, 57, and 65, 64. And I chose those frames because in 65, 57, you get a, a head-on view. Um, there's no side perspective involved. It's just a direct line between us, the observer, and the object. And in 55, or excuse me, 65, 64, we get a good side shot of it. It's not just the the front of the. It's not just the front of it we're looking at, uh, and directly in line with it. So, I, I'm hoping you can see why I chose these two frames. If we go back to this, and I, I expect to see double the redshift, um, if we're looking from front to rear, uh, then if we're looking at uh, a different perspective where we're not getting the light waves, the light waves traveling through this entire gravitational interaction, this entire downward slope, but only half of it, that we would only see approximately half the redshift. So that is why I chose this because we can see a good a good side shot of it, and incidentally, uh, you you can just you can just uh, do your own do your own deduction, but it's quite interesting to me right off the bat that you can you cannot see this darkened outline on the front of this on the front of this object in this shot. Just think about that. Just if if you, if you feel inclined, go over the frames and and run them forward and backward and notice how the object when the object gets closer as the object gets closer and the side view becomes more prevalent this outline disappears more and more and it disappears from the front of the front of the craft to the rear of it it disappears starting at the front and then moving gradually towards the rear so to get back get back to what i was saying we have uh, 6557, right? What I essentially did was I remeasured the color values for the, the darkened ring here and the landscape directly in the direct vicinity of that ring. And then I went to 6564 and did the same thing. Measured the color value of this, this darkened outline on the top here and then the color value of the landscape directly behind it. And you're going to, I'm hoping that somebody will j drop their jaw like I did when I, when I did this, when I saw this. But essentially, here's what we've got. This is frame 65, 64, where we've got this, the good side shot of it, where we expect to see only half the red shift. And these are the color values that I measured. This was for the landscape, and this was for the darkened ring. And so the same down here for 57, only we've got a, a direct line uh, from front to rear of it, and we don't get a side perspective. 
And lo and behold, the value differences, look at them. When I noticed, that when, I, when I first noticed this, I just about lost my, lost my shit. I'm sorry for the for the language, but I just about lost it. That is phenomenal. Wow. And for for those of you who uh, who are um, aware of the wow signal, this is kind of acquiescent to that. I just thought that was kind of uh, appropriate in this case. <laughs> but look at this, and then look at that, and. Tell me we don't have something here. The CGI window, or the, the, excuse me, the CGI argument is getting thrown out the window faster than the microwave of somebody who cheated on their girlfriend at this point. As far as I'm concerned, the CGI argument has just about gone away completely. You would have to con convince me pretty heavily that Sam and Jimmy are at least considerably interested in physics, if not themselves physicists. <laughs> Man, I just I wanted to just put this out here because it was it was too good to leave hanging for any significant or insignificant period of time. Um, you know, this is this is theoretical, but it's it's well-founded theory within the confines of general relativity. Let me know what you guys think. This is pretty big. Pretty big.